looking at 31, I had a question coming out of section 6.2, number 49. And here we were given a graph and asked to write its equation. So if I look at it, it, it's some form of an exponential curve. And let's just talk about what we know our basic curves look like at this point. So if I had exponential growth, it would look something like this, right? So this is a curve, I'll write it here. This is your basic graph of exponential growth. And then if I had exponential decay, it would look, oops, I never know why that little magnifier comes up. This is exponential decay. All right, this is when you have a base that is greater than one, and this is when you have a base that is less than one, right? Because again, if your base is equal to one, you're, you're kind of at equilibrium, and you're not moving, or you're not growing nor decaying. So I want to talk about what these graphs would look like if I reflected them over x, the x-axis. And the reason I'm doing this is because when I look at these first two graphs, the growth model and the decay model, that doesn't look like the one I have in front of me. So let me see what it would look like if I reflected them over the x-axis. So if I were to reflect this one over the x-axis, and I know it's getting a little cramped here, this graph would look something like that, right? And then if I had my decay graph getting reflected, it would look something like this. And if I look at those two, I'm gonna switch to my highlighter here. If I look at those two, these graphs seem to match. Right, so at least they're heading in the same direction. So at this point, I think I have an exponential growth model, but it's been reflected over the x-axis. And we learned back in chapter three that when you reflect over the x-axis, you're gonna wind up putting a negative, and I don't know if you can see it. Hold on, let me change pen colors. You're gonna put a negative out in front of that, that um, exponential term. So with that, Let's see if we can start to pick apart some of our things. I'm going to erase this here and erase this here. So I say here all exponential functions, you can basically write them in this form. And let's talk about how things have shifted a bit. So this graph has not been shifted left or right. So I don't have to worry about this C number here, but it has been shifted up, right? You can see that there's actually a horizontal asymptote right here at Y equals seven. And so that is the vertical shift. So we've been shifted up seven units. Vertical shift, seven units up. And that will mean that my D value is seven. So I know at this point D is seven and C is zero because again, I haven't been shifted left or right, but I have been shifted up. So that's, that's great. And the other thing that I'm gonna start to point out, and it's always good to take a look at is where was the Y intercept, zero comma five. All right, so with that, let me start putting these pieces together. So if we start with our basic function, and I'm going to start my work here. If we go with y equaling a times b to the x plus c plus d. All right, so again, we've got our vertical shift, our horizontal shift, our vertical stretch that we have to account for, and here is our base. We're going to keep, I know there's a lot of letters in there. We're going to keep y and x, and we got to figure out what a, b, c, and d are. All right, so like I said, if we go to where we are so far, C was zero because I did not shift left or right, and D was seven because I shifted seven units up. Right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in my y-intercept of zero, five, and see what that simplifies this equation to. So if I put five in for y, I'm gonna have B to the zero plus seven. B to the zero is one, so this is five equaling A plus seven, and that's gonna get me to A equaling negative two. So to summarize where we are with our equation, so far I'm at, whoops, that went to the eraser. I'm at y is equal to negative two times b to the x plus seven. All I need to do now is find my b value. And for that, you just need another ordered pair. And when I look at this, to me, one, one seems like a nice point on that graph. Uh, that, that just hit at a grid mark, so that's the one I'm gonna use. So now I'm gonna plug in one for y and one for x and we're gonna see what that simplifies to. So as I'm looking at this, I get one is equal to negative two B plus seven. If I move the seven to the other side, I'm looking at negative two B equaling, and if we do this, this should be negative six. All right, and then when I divide both sides by two, I'm gonna get B is equal to three. All right, so now let's see where we are overall. So we are at Y is equal to negative two times three to the X plus seven, all right? So there is my function, and that should match. Yep, there's my answer. Great. So I got the, the correct answer. And you could always, if you wanted to just check this, plug this into your graph.
graphing calculator and make sure that that, well, let me write calculator, make sure that graph and, um, and those ordered pairs match what you have in front of you. But uh, this, this is working because also just take note that the base is three, right? And that should, whenever your base is greater than one, you should have exponential growth. And that just circles back to what we initially thought. Right? I initially thought, yeah, it's going to be exponential growth with a reflection over the x-axis. Well, sure enough, I have that exponential growth and a reflection over the x-axis. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.